I'm just ready to worship. Amen. Amen. God's good. All the time. I'm glad we can sing this song, I Feel the Rain versus I See the Snow. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, feel the rain. Amen. So we're going to sing this song. And, and look, remember, God, y'all say it is, God has got this. God's got this. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Go ahead.
big time. This is all stepping out. <laughs> stepping out in faith. Amen? Instead of playing, you know, uh, so instead of playing the same old song, we're trying to step way out. Amen? And it's hard to step out when I got this bass track on me and I'm leaving. Amen? And I don't mind stepping out when I'm back there. It's tough stepping out when I'm up here. Amen? Now the lights are, everything that could go wrong, almost went wrong today. Amen? So now I got a fight. The voice, God's got this. I mean, that's right, God's got this. Ready? Now we're going to do some of this. is going to be cool. How many remember a little while? Oh, we're going to do because of this first. Oh, really? Y'all getting fired up? I'm ready to go. Ready to do because of this. Because.
think we've done. <laughs> think the <of> pork is. <laughs>
So we're going to talk about we're going to talk about our well, harvest, and the harvest is so much in there that I, honestly, last week the whole plan was to go through all of this at one time. And as I began to study it and began to prepare, I realized that that was not a good plan. That, that you may get over saturated and, and lose out on what was said. And I hope everybody knows that none of this, none of this is to hurt anybody or to jump on anybody. This is for your own self checkup. When you hear this, anytime you hear a message, remember, remember this. If you feel uh, condemned, condemned comes from the devil. But if you feel convicted, that comes from the Holy Spirit. And so my, my, my prayer is during all of this that you get convicted and make you do a self-examination. And if you're being beat up, it's not me up here beating you up, but I promise you that I was never intended. I've been beat up before, and I don't like it. I've been sitting on the front pew and been beat up and did everything but call my name and, and on multiple occasions. And I, because, and, and I just couldn't stand it. So, so there's, no, there's no, nothing here to, to beat up anybody. So remember, I hope that you feel convicted, which is from the Holy Spirit. And that is to rise up and do a better job of what you're doing. And everybody in here can do a better job. Amen? I can't think of anybody that can't do better. Uh, just this week, you know, uh, <coughs> I went to pay for a pizza. And it was a uh, uh, little Caesar's pizza, pizza, pizza for $5. Now it costs five ninety seven. And so I'm paying for a five dollar pizza, five ninety seven. And so I gave her a ten. And so I said, "I give her two pennies, so I would have to get uh, three pennies back. I would just get a nickel back." <clears throat> and when I gave her the two pennies, she said, "What's this for?" <laughs> and I said, "Well, this is so that I will get back pennies." She said, "I said, just put it in the register, ten dollars and ten cents." She said, "But I've already put ten dollars in the register, sir. Now what do I do?" And, and so I just, the lady behind me, she's chuckling. And I, and, I, and I just looked at her and said, it's okay. I said, God must not need a penis anyway. Just give it to me. Because I thought about it in my soul. What kind of seed am I going to sow right now? Am I going to sow a smart aleck seed? Am I going to snap at her? You know, am I going to try to entertain the lady behind me who's already laughing? But instead, I just said, Lord must know I need pennies. Give it to me. So, so again, when you think about planting seeds, it really does change the way that, that, that you see things. And so here we are, just a few slides from last week, just a few, just to keep us going. And then, and then we're going to go into the new ones. As long as the earth endures seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter day and night, will never cease, Genesis 8, 22. Okay? 2020 and 2021 left a lot of people feeling hopeless and helpless. I mean, I've met a lot of people that, man, oh, man, oh, man, they they have just given up. And now, instead of, you know, uh, you know, uh, a dead fish can go with the stream. Only a live fish can go against the stream. And so I've seen a lot of people that have acted like a dead fish, and they're just going with the stream. Because they said, look, why fight? I'm not even trying to fight anymore. And, and, they're, and, and of course... When, you, that, when that happens that way, things change every day. You never know where you're going. There's so, so much junk going on around us right now. And so many things change on a daily basis. So, but if you're a child of God, you're never hopeless and you're never helpless. So we're going to talk about this principle. And then this principle, this principle is not only a principle, it's also a promise. But it also shows that we've got some provision, okay? So, so here it is. Y'all stand with me. Let's read this together, okay? Y'all stand with me. Alright, say it with me. Right. Galatians 6 and 7. Be not deceived. God, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man is soweth, that shall he also reap. Let's do that again. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. So now, now that, all right, let's pray. Father, I love the Lord. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, God, that you are alive and well on your own throne, God. I thank you, God, in the middle of all this junk, Lord, that, that something good is going to happen for your church. And no matter how things are going around us, we know, God, that number one, we're on the launching pad. We're getting ready to leave this place. But until we do, you're not coming back for a weak man in the church. You're coming back for a very powerful church. And I thank you for that. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said, Amen. 
And, and you can be seated on the way down and tell somebody the past is behind oh, us. The future is ahead of us. God, God is with us. us. And, and nothing, nothing shall be impossible. impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. So again, this is a little bit from last week to keep some continuity. Whatsoever you, a man soweth, shall he also reap. That word whatsoever, literally, now this is some powerful, uh, powerful, powerful stuff. Because that word whatsoever literally is talking about your words, your deeds, your action, and your inaction. Don't just think about it. There's a sin of commission, which is action. There's a sin of omission, which is inaction. Okay, so, so either about it, sometimes by saying something or doing something, you, 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 every time you're doing something, you, you are sowing a seed. Positive or negative depends on how you do it. Also, every time you withhold, you are sowing a seed, positive or negative, when I could have could have uh, got on the girl and got on all this stuff and they were doing, you know, they teach, they teach y'all how to how to count change back, blah, 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 blah you know, and blah. but instead, instead, I said, you know, you know, God knew I must need some pennies anyway. So here it is. Uh, I, I, my inaction and and that sin behind it was possible. So, so, and there were so, there's two ways. So it means to scatter. You know, like these guys that were scattered, the stuff for the ice on the roads, uh, uh, the DOT and, and at the drugstore in Washington, there was a guy out, he was just scattering it everywhere. But it also means to invest. Which uh, in the best thing is now you got roads. You're taking the roads. You're taking your time. You're doing it right. Shall means it's going to happen, not what if. It's going to happen. And reap means harvest or reap the same. So, so I hope that you can remember this. That the next time you feel like no matter what you do, you keep getting certain things, and you want things to change. Then I'm going to tell you why. I hear people say, "Well, I'm just going to let them feel, let them see what it feels like." I'm going to give it back to them to see what it feels like. Well, they are reaping what they sow. The problem is, now you're sowing back to them what they're sowing to you. And so now nothing changes. Everybody's just in a, in a big old turn, 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 turn. The Bible says don't return evil for good. I mean, evil for evil, but good for evil. Then you're heaping fires of coal over him. And now you burn their conscience. Okay, so now, so now, here it is. We can only read what has been sown. And I promise you that you step in, in the harvest every day of somebody. So there's, there's room for what we sow. There's room for what others sow. So it always involves seeds. Seeds itself equals potential. Seeds always produce a harvest. And the harvest actually is results. Okay, so again, some are positive and some are negative. We have no choice. I'll say no choice. No choice. We have no choice but to sow seed every day. No choice. And remember I told you, every word, every deed, every action, every inaction that you do is a seed. You have no other choice. Even if you just stay in bed and cover your head all day long or something, not getting out, you're sowing a seed. So remember, no matter what you do, seeds always are coming from you. But the choice is how you sow it and where you sow it and, and what you sow. Okay? So with all that in mind, watch this now. We also reap, we reap uh, the same in kind as we sow. Here it goes again. Whatsoever. Now, here, here's where we are. Here's our new stuff. Whatsoever. Y'all watch this. Be, listen carefully. Whatsoever. The seed... Always, y'all say always. Always. That your seed always surrenders to the law of reproduction. Always. Remember, every action, every inaction, every word, every deed. Your action, inaction, word or deed is a seed. And if whatever you do is going to surrender to the law of reproduction. Now, 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 not just your natural seeds, of course, but I'm talking about seeds of your attitudes, <coughs> seeds of your actions, and this actually, watch this now, this involves, your, this involves your spiritual self, your mental self, and your emotional self, and the seeds that you sow. The next time you're tempted to, to uh, uh, jump back at somebody, think about this. 
what kind of seed? I'm not liking the seed I'm getting from them. Am I going to give back their harvest? Or am I going to change the harvest? If I'm going to give them what they gave me, you know what I'm doing? I'm actually just giving them what they gave me, which is nothing more than the law of reproduction in action. They were mean to me, so I'm mean to them. But when somebody's being mean to you, if you can be good back, eventually, eventually, the coals will start burning on their conscience, and they will see this, and you will see a change in that relationship. So now, now, so again, what we school, what we read, what we sow, every choice we make is a seed. Y'all say every choice. Every choice. Say it again. Every choice that we make is a seed. So, so now I see this. Let's just read this. Job 4 and 8, the Amplified Version. As I myself have seen, those who plow iniquity and sow trouble and mischief reap the same. Go to Penitentiary Center. And start talking about someone reaping. And ask these guys, have they ever had any of this happen to them? And they go, huh, really? And it's kind of like, but everyone's saying things like that, and then you'll say, what you mean today? Those guys will say, today? And, and if some of those guys that are in the B5 unit, they're in a special unit, but there may be some fussing going on, but if they respond to the way somebody acts to them, they both can be kicked out of that program and put back in general population. Because, because again, if you just give back what somebody has given you, then all it does is it gets worse and worse and worse until it really, really, really gets bad. Okay? So now, you have a joke. I so trouble this I'm going to read it. Proverbs 11, 28, the American Standard says, The wicked earns deceptive wages, but he who sows righteousness gets a true reward. Matthew 7 and 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, here it is, whatever you would that men would do to you, you do even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. In other words, it's not you know, uh, like, the, like the three stooges. When the three stooges, you ever see the three stooges doing the three musketeers? The three musketeers do this. It's all for, all for one and one for all. The three stooges say it's one for all and every man for himself. You ever heard that? And then, boop, 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 boop. Well, you know what? If that's the kind of attitude you got, I'm telling you, I really try my best to give out what I'd like to receive. I don't always get it. Some people don't realize it yet. They have not grown to that point yet. But you give out what you're wanting, even if it's with your wife, with your children, with your co-workers, with your brothers, with your sisters, with your family. You give to them what you're wanting from them. You give it out, and eventually it will come back to you. So now, watch this. I want you to see this. Again, let's get these seeds here. We're talking about these seeds. I love this. I talked about this one time before, but like I said, uh, it's okay. We need to hear this every year. Uh, this is just a different version because uh, I've grown since then. We've had COVID since then. So I see it. But uh, we all talk about this is a, a scripture we talk about all the time. We read what we sow. We read the same kind of what we sow. And now we read more than we sow. Did you know that? Whatever you sow, you will get back more of <laughs> more of what you sow. If you sow bitterness everywhere you go, then you're going to reap bitterness and you're going to reap more bitterness. If you sow anger and hatred, then that's what you're going to get back. But if you sow kindness and mercy and love, it will come back and you get back more than you planted. Now, now this is corn, this is a bean. So I didn't research the bean. I should have researched the bean, but let's just talk about corn. Okay? And the law of the power of reproduction. We talked about the law of reproduction. Let's talk about the power of reproduction. One kernel of corn will produce one corn stalk. Alright? Now, on the average, each corn stalk will produce three ears. Alright? With me so far? The average ear of corn has 250 kernels. Wow. So, that one single kernel of corn will have a 
<coughs> wow. One kernel of corn will produce, uh, what it is, the average year 250, so what is that? That's uh, six, seven, eight hundred and fifty uh, corn in this place. So remember, whatever it is you sow, you're going to get back more of it. Just remember that when you decide to blow somebody off, blow them out, kick them in the teeth, remember this, that's going to come back to you and then some. But that's just the way I am. But well, have you noticed, if that's just the way you are, that you're always getting back what you sow? Amen? Everybody around me has a bad attitude. Really? If everybody around you has a bad attitude, I can promise you with pretty much accuracy that you need to look in the mirror. Amen? If everybody has it, now that's one thing, if you know one or two people that's got it, but everybody's got it, then you need to look at yourself. If everything you eat tastes bad, I can promise you it's not the food. It's you. Okay? So now, so I see it. What do you need in your life? What are you looking for? What do you need God to bring to you? What, what do you need God to do for you? Now, I'm getting ready to close. I'm not keeping on today. I told you I, I, I wouldn't because we may get snowed in before the service is out. I do remember one time as we were talking, I looked out and said it's snowing. And then before we got through the service, it wasn't very long, uh, and it started sticking. Y'all remember that? That Sunday when we got the snow? Amen. So I see a fit. What do you need in your life? Do you need some kindness? Do you need some understanding? Do you need some mercy? Watch this. Everything you need. Oh, but here we go. Someone can think I'm meddling right now. Everything you need is in the seed you sow. Wow. Everything you need is in the seed you sow. Well, I do better if they do better. Okay, y'all just sit there and keep doing that. Okay, keep it up. Nobody's going to change. Nothing gets better. You both keep sowing it, and you're both going to keep reaping it. Well, if my wife can do better, if my husband will do better, and my kids, uh, and my boss man, and until they do, I'm going to keep doing this. Guess what you're going to keep giving back? Everything you need is in the seed that you <laughs> sow. So get here, look. Just a few things. If you want, if you want to reap a better marriage, sow into your marriage. You want, you want your spouse to tighten up. Guess what? You need to tighten up first. You want your work relationship to be better? Then you need to start it. Amen. I remember one time uh, uh, a guy came to church. I, I was working at Fountain, and I didn't even know this guy was watching me. I just know that I worked with him a lot because of his department, and he was working in the electrical department. So I'd go to him and I would talk about the boats, and we get going. I mean, uh, I was in there when we get, when we got chewed out from time to time. I was in there with him, and and just some and some time when things went good, and sometimes when things went bad. And uh, one Sunday, he came to church. I was preaching, and when I got through, he said, I want you to know that he had drive like 20 miles to get there, maybe 30. And I said, uh, glad to have you this morning. He said, glad to be here. He said, you know why I'm here, don't you? I'm talking about what, somebody put a hit on me? What is it? <laughs> he said, I've watched you over the last few months as we worked together. I didn't say anything. He said, but watching you made me hungry for what you had. And I realized that what you had didn't come from within. It came from above. And he said, and it's played out from within. He said, I, I want some of that. Not only did the guy get saved years later, he wound up uh, picking up a guitar and wind up playing the guitar 
And even years after that, because I, I, we were separated because he moved away, but I found out that not only did he learn to play the guitar, he started playing in the church praise team. And I saw him about a month ago. And then the men said, thank you for that example. And I said, sure. I said, praise God, thank you that, that I could, you know, I, I'm thank God that I could be an example. He said, this Sunday I'm being installed as a deacon in my church. And I said, well, praise God. You see, and I didn't even know that he was watching me all those months. Okay? So, so work relationships. You want better personal relationships? Be the friend you want to have. Kind of simple, isn't it? Be the friend. I'm going to tell you what. Listen to me carefully. You don't attract who you want. You attract who you are. Listen again. You don't attract who you want. You attract who you are. So if you walk around with a bad attitude and you walk around in misery, you're going to attract misery because it all say misery loves company. Okay. But if you got a good attitude, I can promise you, if you keep a good attitude, you're going to attract people with good attitudes. You're going to notice that things get better. You notice when some people walk in a room, everything lightens up. Some of the people walk in a room and it gets dark again. You know, I, I like to say this. Everybody, everybody in here, everybody that I know of has a chance to brighten the room. Some brighten it by entering it. Some brighten it by leaving it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Amen. First of all, I said, better spiritual life. Well, I'm just not getting fed. Baloney. They'll try to know what you got to swallow so you can lift your mouth again and get some new stuff. Did, did I say that? <laughs> uh huh. Well, I just didn't get my prayers answered. Well, are you praying? Or are you just going down living down to sleep? I pray for all the songs. Well, I really would love to get in. I don't want to get into it. Well, then guess what? God's not going to hold you down and put your nose in. If you want to be stronger in the Lord, He says you draw close to Him and He'll draw close to you. You're going to reap what you sow. So now, watch this. Watch this. If you have a need, sow a seed. Right, this is the principle I follow all the time. Now, ready? You ready? What do you need? Here we am pull a list up here. Do you need love? You need to start showing love. Do you need joy? Then be joyful. Do you need peace? Then, then sow some peace. Do you need help? Help some other people. Whatever you need, try this. This week, if you have a try, remember, remember, if you're feeling condemned right now, I'm not throwing anything at you. The condemning is coming from the devil, and that's not what this is about, and you need to shake that off. But if you feel any conviction or something that tells you to rise up to another level, that's the Holy Spirit. And the whole time I've been working this, the Holy Spirit keeps getting me to rise up to another level, to rise up to another level, to rise up to another level. So, so, so it's not just y'all, I'm feeling it too. So, you need love? Then show love. You need understanding? Then try to understand some other people. You need peace? Then so. Some peace. <laughs> you need joy? So some joy. You need help? So <laughs> some help. Now watch this. Do all this, and it's not just a spiritual thing. It's physically, mentally, financially, spiritually. Get ready, this is gonna hurt. Ready? Grab the whole altar, go grab the altar. Not the altar, but the pew in front of it. Go grab it. Ready? Somebody read that one out for me. With the place of the brain, it starts playing seed. Wow, who said that? Say it again. I didn't have to even say it. Y'all did it for me. Say it again. Start, Mrs. Quick, and place the brain, and start playing seed. Quit placing blame and start planting seeds. Well, if they did better, I'd do better. But nobody likes me, everybody hates me, I think I'll eat some worms for breakfast. The whole world has fallen in on me, nothing changes. Well, let me tell you something. Try planting some seeds. 
you're going to see something happen in your life. And look, some seeds come up immediately. Some seeds, it takes a little while. But I promise you, they will come up. Now, now get ready to watch this. This is, y'all remember Johnny Apple seed? Johnny planted all those apples all over the Midwest, and most of the, stitch, most of the apples he never got a chance to taste. He, but he did plant the seeds, and, and so John Chapman, he planted, he planted Johnny Apple seed. He planted all these seeds because he wanted the settlers to be able to have refreshment, to be able to have something to eat as they're traveling through. So he planted all these orchards. And he never got a chance to eat many of this, okay? Watch this. He said you can count the seeds in an apple, but you can't count the apples in a seed. Let me just do that a little different. You can't count the number of seeds in an apple. Or you can count the number of seeds in an apple, but you cannot count the number of apples in a seed. Ready? Only God can. But I promise you, you're going to read more than you sow. Now, now again, we went, last week we were heavy in the scripture. This week we got we have scripture. We're going to get heavier in scripture next week. And next week should end it. But, but here it goes. Watch this. Ready? Here's what we learned already. Harvest is a consequence. You will always read what you sow. Always. 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 Y'all say always. 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 Think about it. You will always reap what you sow. Think about it when you're talking to the, 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 little, the little person behind the counter. And they're, they're fun. You know, remember I told you, I told you uh, years ago when Walmart used to have a, have a uh, layaway. This was like, man, these can get little boys. And I had, last time I used layaway, I quit using it after that because I stood in line for an hour, maybe an hour and a half, waiting for my layaway. And as I finally get up, there's two ladies. And by the look, so the ladies look, you know, well, the dudes, they're in front of me. And they're up next, and there's a little teenager working behind the counter. And I'm behind those ladies. The little girl started having problems. And the women said, what's your problem? And I saw the tape. You know, if you know anything about cash registers, back, especially back then, once the white tape starts having blue down the side of it, what's that mean? Running out. You're running out. But I already seen it from turning blue. And I thought we were already having a problem. And then she goes, I'm sorry, ladies, we have to wait a minute. And they said, what is it now? We've been waiting for an hour and a half. And I said to myself, God, help me, ladies, be quiet. And that little girl said, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry, ma'am. But, 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 but the tech, cash register ran out of tape. And so then she had to go find some tape. They're just a fuss. She comes back with her tape. And when she comes back with her tape, she tries to put it in. And, her, and they're, they're, they're arguing. And now they're cussing her. They are cussing this young lady. So now these well to ladies are cussing this young girl who's behind the counter. And her hands are like this. And she can't even get the can't even get the roll in. She finally gets the roll in the cash register, and she gets it running. And they're still cussing her. And you know, I don't woman like to get into anything. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I said, God, please give me some wisdom so I can put an end to this. And it hit me. So here's these ladies, and I'm right behind them in the center. And so I just put my head forward, and I said. I said, take your time, dear. There won't be one perfect, and they crucified him. And those two ladies who were cussing and fussing at her and cussing her knew that. They looked at each other and said, yeah, yeah. And the little girl said, take your time, honey. Take your time. There won't be one perfect, they crucified him. Go ahead. Take your time. You see, you're going to give what you sow. Amen? Number two, harvest is a process. It might not happen overnight. You can plant all you want to and expect it to come up. I did see yesterday there was some kind of bamboo tree 
Uh, I can't remember the name of the tree was, but it grew like an inch an hour once it started growing. And it showed it growing. It was amazing. Okay, but you know what? I can take this, this bean right here, and I can take it and plant it in the ground, and I can go every day and pull the, pull the dirt back and see if it's growing. Eventually, I'm going to destroy the seed. you got to trust it. Once you plant it, you've got to trust it. It is going to do what it's programmed to do. It takes time, and it takes steps. Amen? So then, and then there, this, this is for next week. And Brandon, come on up here and play some song, bro. Harvest is the season. There is an appropriate time for a new season. You may not see it right now. You may be feeding a relationship and you don't see any change. Just keep feeding. Don't, don't grow weary and well do it. Don't grow weary in well-doing, where you shall reap if you faint not. We'll talk about that next week. But there is a season. Amen? This week, here's my challenge to you. Whatever you need to see a change in, whether it's a relationship, whether it is a uh, job relationship, a uh, 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 personal relationship, whether there's other things in your life you need to see change, instead of complaining about it, or instead of giving back what somebody gave you, which is never even what you they sow, but now you're sowing and you're going to reap it back, try something different. And that is, sow what you need. Sow what you need. And me and everybody stand here. back. 
I read when I studied my reading when my kids were smaller and they were just getting started. I did my best right now. With my family, with my especially with my wife, I try my best to sow what I'd like to read. With y'all, I sow what I'd like to read.
that we would love you more each day and to increase our faith in you. Amen.